Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you the absolute minimum you need to get a data set to be able to run the Google Collab notebooks I showed you for the LLM videos. Um, then I'll explain how to get a bigger data set and then I'll explain what I'm actually doing. So we're getting the data set from Alpha Vantage. So you're going to need to get a key and the free uh, tier gives you um, 25 API calls a day and five um, API calls per minute. So keep that in mind. So you register, you write you're an investor or a student or whatever other uh, organization. I am cool An email and write your email address. Okay. Um, so once you get the API key, you paste it in here. Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you like a few steps to just get a minimal data set. So I have these two helper functions. Um, one is going to give, is going to call the API one time to get the data between a time from and a time to with the API key. It's just going to call the data. It's going to give me a JSON with like uh, news article summaries and um, sentiment scores and that sort of thing. And then I have this other helper thing, which will translate like numeric sentiment scores to bearish, bullish, and neutral. Um, so I'm not going to get into details about that this second. I'm just going to show you what you need to get the data set. So um, the idea is we're going to go backwards in time. And if we have a time two equal just um, uh, 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 blank uh, quotations, it means until the current time. So basically we go back in time from the current time, um, back in time, we uh, each time we get the, like the earliest time. And then we go uh, and that, uh, like you call the API the first time, you get the earliest time. Um, and that's going to be your new time too. And then you keep going until um, you run out of API calls. So if you do that for 25 times in a day, you get a minimum data set if you run it for one day. After five calls, you have to pause for a minute because of the max five per minute. So I created this get data set function to do that. And it does a few other things and I'll explain those at the end of the video. I don't wanna, I wanna first give you guys like the minimum example that'll work. So um, this by the way has like a few arguments, max API cost per day, max per minute. So if you do upgrade, you could change these. I'll just make the max per day one just because I am running out of API calls. Okay, so then you run this uh, thing and you get a minimum data set for a day. Um, so I wrote notes, it takes five minutes, LOL, why? Because 25 calls, every five minutes I pause for, every five calls I pause for a minute. So it takes uh, 25 minutes. And you can stop right here. You have a data set you can use in Colab for the, um, LLM videos. Okay, so let me just show you how to do that. You basically will run the data set and you do time two, and this means till the current time. And then you save it to teslasentiment.csv. The data set looks something like this. You'll get like a time published, title, URL, author summary, etc. We'll go through this in, in more detail. Oops, um, I don't know what that was. Okay, so. Um, Anyways, um, when you're running on the cloud, you get these weird things. So, okay, if this is not enough data for you, what you can do is you could basically, like let's say you run this for a day, you run out of API calls, you did 25. Mm -hmm. So the next day you want, you, you still need more data. Let's say it's uh, not Tesla, it's like, uh, let's say it is Tesla. It's not some stock without much news like Wish. Um, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna find um, the earliest time, which is in this case here, and then you're going to set your um, time two to be basically um, the minute of this because um, you can't put seconds in the API. So up until here, um, so you chop off the last two, it'll be your new time two, and then you'll keep going um, backwards in time until eventually like one day you'll have no, nothing to get. Um, that's what my code does. I'm assuming I did it right, which is a big assumption. Um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, so like, so let's say like, okay, you run this the first day you had 25 as usual, all that stuff. So then the next day you're like, wow, I want more data. Um, I'm a data, um, pig or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, you can then load the file the next day. Right. Um, and then I just did a sort index just for precaution. My code actually already handles that, but like, okay. So then the earliest time is this is this dude right here. So then you need to find the earliest time published. So that'll be like, um, that'll be like here. 
earliest time published. Uh, and, and it looks like this. And remember, I said you have to chop this off because the API doesn't let you go to the second level. And as you see, after the hour, it'll be after the date, it'll be hours, minutes, and seconds. So you have to chop off the seconds. Um, so then you can call the, um, I'll say like, uh, uh, get more data. You can uh, then call this, uh, this method with the earliest time being up until the chopped off point. And then we can uh, combine the data sets. Um, remember, I only used one call. Usually you use 25, so it'll take five minutes and you'll get more data, but then you can like basically concatenate and uh, drop duplicates based on summary. I did keep equals first, but maybe you should do keep equals. It's probably safer to do keep equals. Uh, it depends on your application, honestly. I just did keep equals first. But like you have to be very careful with these things if you're like trying to make predictions based on it, because like if if they like update a summary or that sort of thing, um, you have to be careful. So uh, for this, I'm just doing it for the LLM, so I'm not being careful. So basically, I'm combining it. I'm adding the new things to the old things, and then I am uh, saving to CSV again. And then what happens is, let's say after five days you run out of data, or let's say you have your data set and like. Um, your data set only, and you did it like a week ago. Now you want to add, <laughs> you're a week later and you want to like add the week that you missed out on. So now we can go backwards in time from the current date to where we left off here, which is like the earliest time here. Um, so uh, long story short, we can like reload the data to CS from CSV. We get the latest time published, which is like basically the, um, the most recent data point. Um, and we have to round to the nearest minute above in this case. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm rounding to the nearest minute above. I get the next timestamp in the right format. And then I call this get data set function to get DF new. Um, I mean, you can do, you can do this. Uh, um, I, uh, I, I just, I was just getting cheap on API calls. Um, but like you do time from equals the next timestamp here and time to equals the current time. And then uh, you'll combine uh, your data frames, save it to CSV, and you get that uh, CSV. Okay. Um, so you do that and then you save it. Because I don't wanna run this, uh, and plus, because I just ran it, like I have data until the current time, so it's not gonna matter. So, okay, so then you get a CSV. Of course, you could have just stopped at the first CSV we created after the first day, and you would have enough to run the collab notebooks which is probably what I recommend most of you guys do, but some of you guys are curious. If you wanna know what my code does, I can actually explain it. So I have this get data function, this get data function, and then I go backwards in time, remember. Each time I have a time from and a time to, I start with the end all the way, right? Um, and let me first change this to 25 calls a day. Um, and I'm sorry for my microphone, I my USB-C port, uh, my USB uh, Docker docking station stopped working. So uh, my laptop's the USB-C only, and I only have USB. Uh, I don't have USB things, so I need a docking station. So no speaker, no webcam. Anyways, um, okay. So what is my code doing? It's going backwards in time, and it's always calling this get data function, right? And by the way, um, in the first few calls, I had the time from being some super early date, like 2003. There's only data from 2022, but this makes everything like uh, work out. Um, but anyways, uh, long story short, I call this function, this is an important function. Um, so I call this, um, so I'll call this like explanation. Um, explanation. So I call this function and uh, usually I get an error the first time I run something. So I'll do time to equals uh, current time and time from I'll do, um, I mean, you could do current time. It works one time, but then it screws the rest of the things up. And there's a lot of arguments um, in Alpha Vantage, like you can see. I'm just showing you like what I did. So like um, basically uh, you get this data and this data has, it's like a, dic it's like a dictionary, right? So it has a few things, it has items, number of items, it would, it'll be like 692. So it'd be like data items. 
equals 692. And then there's a few interesting things. There's like a sentiment score definition, which gives you like what it means. You get sentiment scores. So under minus 0.35 is bearish, between minus 0.35 and negative uh, 0.15 is somewhat bearish. Neutral is between negative 0.15 and 0.15. And then for bullish, it's similar to the other ones. Um, and there's also like a relevant score, like how relevant each ticker is, because you can have multiple tickers. So, uh, so there's also a, like a relevant score definition. Uh, okay, so um, the most important thing though is um, there is a thing called feed, and that's a real data. It looks like it's a data feed, it's a real data. And it looks like it's basically, um, if I do pd.dataframe, to, to view it in a, in a data frame. This is basically our data. This is the most important thing. So we have a title, uh, a URL, time published, author, summary. Um, there's a few other things, like there's topics, there's overall sentiment score, um, and there's a ticker sentiment. Okay, so um, anyways, um, uh, yes, yeah, so there's overall um, sentiment score and ticker sentiment. So let me explain. Um, okay, so um, if I just call this DF for a second. Okay, so um, um, I do a few things. Since I'm only concerned about Tesla, I'm actually going to do a few things. I'm going to only take, um, so there's like a, a thing called ticker sentiment and it has like a list of tickers and it gives a sentiment score for each ticker. So I'm gonna basically, um, uh, Basically going to um, oh sorry, <laughs> I, it's funny. I realized I have I, I made a bug here, but it doesn't matter because I'm not really using relevant score, so it's okay I guess. Um, so okay, uh, so uh, um, okay. So with the ticker sentiment, what I do is I basically only take the sentiment score for Tesla. Um, so that's going to be my sentiment score, and I also basically only filter for things with. Uh, just Tesla or Tesla in the in the title, and I told you the sentiment has like a certain number of tickers, and I only take it when I have one ticker exactly right. So I do all that stuff. Um, I filter that, and then I apply this like um, the get sentiment label function I spoke about here, which will convert the numeric sentiment value to a bearish, neutral, and bullish. And they had their definition of, of, of somewhat bearish and somewhat bullish also. So I, I have a, a field for that, but the label will just have three. So let me just kind of show you guys what I mean. So I, if I have DF, let's look at DF.com for a second. So there's this um, uh, ticker sentiment. So this will give me like uh, Tesla um, and they, uh, and I had, okay, oh. Oh, sorry, I did not have a bug, I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, I should have kept my old code. So the ticker sentiment has a relevant score and has a sentiment score. So I only extract the sentiment score, right? Uh, oh, I, uh, there was a sentiment label, so I didn't even need to go all the way to that. Anyways, forget, forget that. Just use my code at the beginning. I shouldn't have explained it, it was easier at the beginning. So I extract this basically and then I, I do a function where I count the number of tickers and I filter and only take it with one ticker. And I also look at df.title and I only take things with Tesla or Tesla, the symbol in the title. So that's kind of explanation of what I'm doing. Um, and then I'm basically, I also drop duplicates and do a few things like that. So let me just fix this bug and then I'll put this on GitHub. Um, anyways, just run the first part, get the data set if you really want the data set. And this should be a ticker sentiment also. Okay, yeah, so I could have made this easier. Um, but anyways, uh, this was just because I, I, I felt like you guys needed the data set to get going. So anyways, uh, see you guys in the next real video, hopefully with the microphone fixed.